Okay, now there are some challenges. So for those of you who are up to it, um, let's give some of these a try. We can add in another loop so the player can um, go multiple times. Um, we've already done the, this change, so a random number. Add a function that prints the results. We've done that. Add a counter that keeps track of overall results and overall percentages. And then um, add a button. Now, I'm not going to show you how to add a button, but you do know how to do that. Let's just talk about adding another loop and another counter. So I want to repeat main. I'm actually going to, you can just go ahead and do the loop in here, but I'm just going to make this into, um, I've got my do something and this is the, um, this is a complete match. So I'm just going to call this like um, math match. So it's like a game or something. And now my main is going to actually call my math. Now I can keep my intro there or I can move it. And now I'm going to basically set up a while loop so while they want to keep going they can keep so I'm going to just start with choice equals one and while choice equals equals one so I am going to make them do it at least one time so you could ask in advance and let them opt out to not do any problems by just asking right here you could so this would be your priming read I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they do one set so while choice equals equals one I'm going to do my math math match and then I'm going to have to do my modification read so I'm going to ask them play again one equals yes two equals no okay. so I've got my basic loop going on right there let's go ahead and give it to so I just changed the range real quick so it wouldn't have to be a long time. Let's run this with the modifications we have. We just added in the second loop. I'm going to enter in nine numbers. Okay, play again. Let's play again. Six numbers. Okay, and then I quit. So the loop is working fine. We come here, maybe the next challenge then, let's add another counter that keeps track of the overall correct results and an overall percentage. Let's just start with another counter. So I've got a counter here that just keeps track of each match. That's this part right here. But I want to know the overall number less than 10. So this could be like if you do several sets of math problems, how many overall did you get correct? So like this time I got six, this time I got four. It's a total of 10. That's the kind of answer I want to get. So this count is great for each individual match, and now I want to keep like a total. So I'm going to have, I could even call it total, I'm going to call it all count. So it counts all of the matches. And of course I'm going to start it at zero. Now we want to do kind of similar to how we did with the do something. We passed in count as, a, as an argument and returned it so that I would know the count. So I can do the same thing here for each match. Notice. Uh, for each match, I can return this count back into my main, and this makes it a return function. So now I'm going to have to change my call to a return function call, and it's going to return count back. Let's just call this new count, and then I want to take the new count and add it to my all count. Okay, so to see if this works, let's just go ahead and print. So I'll just do a little something like final results. And let's print all count. Okay, so let's try it again. I'm going to enter three numbers. Okay, and I got two correct. Let's play again. I'm going to enter three numbers again. I got one correct, so altogether I should have three correct. And there we go. I've got the results, three, but I don't have a percent. In order to do that, I need to not only know how many correct, but I need to know all the total. So if I've got an all count, maybe I'll have, let's have all problems. So I could have this function return two things. It could return the count and the problems. 
And that kind of works in Python, but we really want to, if we can at all possible, make our functions just do one thing. So let's create another little function that just gets the properties. Does one thing. So let's get number problems. And I'm going to take this line of code right here. I'm going to cut it from there. I'm going to put it right there. Then I'm going to return the problems. Okay. So this little function can get called here in my main. I've got all problems. And then while they do want a choice, I'm going to get a new problems. So new problems is going to equal, because this is a return. Where do we go here? Right here. This is a return function, so it has to be part of an assignment. So I'm going to get number problems. Okay, and I assigned it to this variable. Now match, my math match needs problems. It's right here. It doesn't have it anymore. So what do I have to do? It needs it as a parameter. And that means down here, new problems will be the argument. So this is what I had here. Argument, it's going to get passed here. Everything's going to be fine. And then since I incremented all count, I'm also going to need to increment all problems. So this is a way that I can just keep, I have several functions going on now. Some of them, this one is still a void, the rest, this one's still a void, the rest of them are returns. Some of them have parameters, some of them don't. It's just kind of what, what it needs. So don't try and just give everything to it because, oh, it's there, I'll pass everything in as a parameter. Uh, you want to keep, be careful about that, make everything as local as possible, and only pass in what they absolutely need. So this is a tidy little program. Now, could I use all count and all problems with my results? Instead of printing everything over again, could I just do this? Let's give it a try. So I have two parameters, problems and count. And so for my final results, I'm going to call print results, avoid function. And I'm going to, instead of saying problems, I'm going to say all problems. Instead of count, I'm going to say all count. So let's see if this works. I'm going to enter eight numbers. Okay, and five of them more. Let's play one more time. I'm going to enter ten numbers. Okay, so I've got five and I've got six. Let's not play anymore. My final results, eleven. Look at that. So one great advantage here of doing this print results is I could actually use it for every time I just called math, but I could also use it for my final results. So that's pretty cool. The power of functions, parameters, and arguments. So if you get this far, you've met all the requirements except for doing a button. And you're pretty familiar with doing that. The button would call main instead of having it here. So I'm sure you can handle that if you feel like it. And good luck and have fun with this program.